Hello and welcome to this wonderful lecture in anthropology. Uh, this lecture is about Australopithecus. Australopithecus. This has nothing to do with Australia. In Greek, Australo means southern and Pithecus means ape. Australo means southern. And Pithecus means ape. So Australopithecus means the southern ape, the ape from the southern hemisphere. Australopithecus includes a collection of hominid species. Hominid. We belong to, we human beings belong to the family Hominidae and super family hominidae okay so australopithecus includes a collection of hominid species which lived roughly between 4 to 2 million years and it is considered that we human beings got evolved from or descended from the australopithecus that means Australopithecus were our human ancestor. They were our ancestors. So how we can prove that one ape which lived a few million years ago, how we assume that it is our ancestor? This is based on a number of anatomical similarities, a number of anatomical features. So about this later we will discuss you know, the phylogenetic position of Australopithecus. So these Australopithecus were bipedal, they were terrestrial and they had a large jaw meant for biting and chewing. And in this lecture, let us discuss about uh, the following things, about the discovery of Australopithecus. The very famous discovery of this Thayung baby, a Thayung child, the discovery of Lucy, the discovery of Eridi. Then let us discuss about uh, the anatomical features of Australopithecus, its anatomical descriptions, the cephalic features, post cephalic features, then the locomotion. As I told you earlier, Australopithecus were bipedal, they were terrestrial. But though they were bipedal, the way in which they walked on the earth was slightly different from the way in which we human beings used to walk. We call it as jog trot like walk. So what is that type of locomotion? And then finally, are the phylogenetic position of Australopithecus. So by phylogenetic position, we discuss how and why we place this group of fossils in the line of human evolution. So what are all the anatomical features which very clearly shows that yes, these fossils were or these hominids were in the line of human evolution. We descended from these fossils, from these apes. That we will discuss in the phylogenetic position of Australopithecus. And then in the right, I will also be uh, introducing you to a number of anatomical terms which are very much important in understanding these uh, human ancestors, these primates. Okay, fine. So first let us discuss about uh, the discovery of Australopithecus. In the year uh, 1925, in fact, uh, uh, in 1924 it happened, few mine workers, few workers were working in a limestone quarry at a place called as Thayung near uh, Johannesburg in South Africa, in South Africa. Uh, they discovered one fossil, fossil of a small baby and it went to a number of places, it was displayed at many places and finally it reached Raymond Dart through his student. His student found it somewhere 
in a home on dam she thought that yeah this particular thing should be a very important fossil and she brought it to raymond dart the very famous uh, paleoanthropologist who was then working among the number of fossils uh, it was the fossil of a small baby raymond dart he named this after studying it after studying the anatomical features of the fossil thoroughly in a matter of four months he came to a conclusion that yes this is a very important fossil and this should be our human ancestor and he named this fossil as australopithecus africanus that is the southern ape from africa then raymond dart he published a number of papers about uh, this australopithecus africanus and he assumed that australopithecus africanus should be in the line of human evolution but this particular uh, assumption by or this particular uh, conclusion by raymond dart was debated in length uh, because during those times we didn't have uh, much of anatomical evidences or number of similar fossils uh, to show that yes this australopithecus was in the line of human evolution so it was very much debated but later with the number of subsequent discoveries there were number of subsequent species of australopithecus which were uh, discovered from africa and uh, based on those evidences right those fossils gave us uh, ample evidence a uh, sufficient evidence to show that australopithecus were in the line of human evolution that we human beings have descended from australopithecus so this fossil baby was very famously named as uh, uh, thayung baby or thayung child by uh, raymond dart raymond dart so the next important discovery it happened some, some 10 years after the discovery of uh, this thayung baby uh, professor robert brown he discovered one adult cranium at a place called as zotsterk fontaine in south africa zotsterk fontaine in south africa so this is an adult fossil but he managed to discover only some broken parts of for the adult cranium so what do you mean by cranium cranium so cranium refers to the collection of a few bones which surrounds or which envelops the human brain it is not a single piece of bone there are close to there are rock a number of bones which makes the cranium so cranium refers to a collection of bone which covers the human brain so there are number of bones as i told you the most importantly the frontal one frontal parietal occipital this one is uh, temporal this bone is yet sphenoid and this blue color one is uh, the ethmoid there are number of bones here but there is no need to remember each and every bone here and even cranium 
I told you cranium is no, a bony envelope which surrounds, which, which envelops human brain. It is composed of a number of important bones, most importantly the frontal, parietal, occipital, this temporal, the one sphenoid and the, the ethmoid bone. The ethmoid bone will be there inside the eyes here. And uh, uh, in anthropology, that to an evolutionary perspective, it is sufficient if you are comfortable with uh, these three bones, frontal, parietal, occipital. If you are comfortable with this, that is more than sufficient. There is no need to worry even about the temporal bone, the sphenoid, the ethmoid. Please do not bother. Please do not worry. If you are comfortable with the uh, These three it is sufficient, frontal, parietal and occipital. Okay, so you okay with the uh, cranium, the term cranium. So cranium refers to a collection of bones which covers the human brain. And in evolutionary perspective or in anthropological perspective, it is sufficient that if you can remember these three bones of the cranium, the frontal, the parietal and the the occipital. So do not bother much about the temporal bone here, the sphenoid and uh, the ethmoid bone. There is no need to worry about uh, these bones. Okay. So as we discussed, Robert Brown, he discovered one adult cranium. Adult cranium from Sterkfontein in South Africa. Then subsequently there were a number of other discoveries. Most importantly the discovery of Lucy by um, Donald Johnson. Lucy is called as the mother of a called as grandmother. Grandmother of humankind. Grandmother of humankind. So close to around 47 bones were recovered. So the first time, right, we managed to find a huge collection of all bones of Australopithecus. And uh, uh, in fact, uh, Lucy was the first uh, human ancestor in which we managed to find at least 40% of all the skeletal remains. She is our Lucy, the grandmother of humankind. And why the name Lucy? See, it was discovered in the year uh, 19... <coughs> 1974. And um, see, mainly in the Afar region of uh, Afar. region of Ethiopia. So it was during this time one song was very famous, song by the rock band uh, Beatles. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. They used to play this song repeatedly in the tents it seems, the Afar region of Ethiopia where they were uh, uh, doing some excavation or paleoanthropologist. And once when Lucy, once when the fossil was discovered, they were so happy to name it as uh, Lucy. And uh, there are a number of research uh, which followed uh, this particular excavation and many anthropologists did lot of work in uh, Lucy. And uh, we even managed to find that how Lucy died. So majority of the opinion says that Lucy died due to a fall from a tree. 
you don't know why she climbed that tree and she uh, she fell from the tree and she died because of the injuries which she had sustained during the fall lucy uh, then there was one more important discovery that is uh, it was originally named as australopithecus Australopithecus ramidus. Uh, but uh, see, this fossil was discovered in the year 1992 to 94. This fossil was discovered from uh, the Aramis region of uh, Ethiopia. But this fossil was slightly older actually, some 5 million years old and uh, the cranial capacity was very minimum. The cranial capacity was somewhere around uh, uh, 300 to 330 cubic centimeter. Cranial cranial capacity. So by cranial capacity, we refer to the size of the cranium. We refer to the size of the cranium. So this is very small. For most of the other Australopithecus, right, cranial capacity used to be around 400 to 600 cc at least. 400 to 600 cc. Uh, but it is something unusually less. And there were some other <coughs> um, differences also. As a result, right, within a matter of two or three years, Australopithecus ramidus was renamed as Eridipithecus <coughs> Eridipithecus ramidus Eridi means ground or floor Pithecus you know Pithecus means a Ramidus or Rami means root all in Greek. Okay. Um, so uh, the fossil was renamed as Eridipithecus, and uh, it is still believed that Eridipithecus ramidus was an ancestor to Australopithecus. So this is sufficient about uh, the discovery of. of Australopithecus. Then now let us discuss about, or in the next lecture, let us discuss about the anatomical description of Australopithecus.